Static equilibrium. So we have a couple goals for this session. One is to simply introduce the concept of static equilibrium and to talk about the conditions the forces and torques have to satisfy so, so that something that is at rest remains at rest. And then we'll look at a particular example of static equilibrium. Okay, so for an object to be in static equilibrium, in other words, for it to remain at rest, two conditions must be met. The object must have no net force. The sum of all the forces equals zero. We're very familiar with that concept. And it must also have no net torque. The sum of all the torques on the object must also be zero. And don't forget that the magnitude of an individual torque we can calculate from the equation tau is RF sine theta. Okay, so that is really our introduction to static equilibrium and a look at the conditions that the forces and torques have to satisfy on an object for the object to remain at rest, in other words, for it to remain in static equilibrium. So let's look at a particular example. So here we have just a beam, a piece of wood, and it sits on two identical scales. Scale A happens to be farther from the center of the beam than is scale B, but the beam remains in equilibrium. In other words, it is balanced. Which scale do you think shows a higher reading, scale A or scale B? So to help us answer this, we're going to sketch a free body diagram. So there's our beam, and we haven't really worried about this previous in the course or in our learning of physics, but now because we're going to use torques, you have to be really super careful about where you draw those forces. You have to attach them in exactly the right place. So when you draw the force of gravity, then you place it right at the center of gravity, which in this case is the center of the beam because we have a uniform beam. So there's our mg force right in the middle, has to be there. And we'll start, we'll start by drawing the two normal forces, the same size, one up, normal force on from uh, scale A applied to the beam, and the second one, the normal force applied by scale B to the beam. We've drawn them the same size, that might not necessarily turn out to be the way it really is. Let's go investigate that. Okay, so we're going to ask the question, answer the question, is each normal force half the weight of the beam? Let's find out. So if we just think about what we know about forces, we're pretty good at that. So we know the sum of all the forces equals ma, but in this case, there's no acceleration, so sum of all the forces has to be zero. So we have just simply three forces we'll choose up to be positive. So the sum of the two normal forces minus the mg force has to equal zero. That tells us FNA plus FNB equals mg. If we happen to choose that mg is 12 newtons, then what we know from adding forces, from doing the sum of the forces, is that the two normal forces add up to 12 newtons but we actually don't know the values of the individual forces. Are they 6 newtons and 6 newtons? Are they 10 newtons and 2 newtons? Who knows? If all we know about our forces, we actually can't solve the problem. So this is why we use torques. So torque to the rescue. So to actually calculate torque, we need some distances, and we also need to choose an axis to take torques around. So in this case, we'll take torques around the center of the beam and we'll measure our distances from there, so we'll say scale B is D to the right of the center and scale A is 2D to the left of the center. Okay, and there's our axis right through the middle. So the sum of all the torques is, has to be zero. We'll add up the three torques. We'll say clockwise is positive, so the one from scale A is a clockwise torque while the one from scale B is a counterclockwise torque, and the mg force gives no torque because it passes through the axis. Okay, so we didn't know what the length of the beam was. We're just using, you know, uh, looks like about 4d long, but that's okay. The d here cancels out. So this tells us that 2 times fna is fnb. Well, that's useful. We can combine this, what we learned from the forces, to find the two normal forces, or 
let's try torque do, doing torques around a different axis. So we'll take torque around the B, where this B scale is. That gets rid of F and B from our torque equation, which is useful. Okay, so again, clockwise is positive. Now we're 3D away from B. Scale A is 3D away, minus dmg. Uh, again, the Ds cancel, so this turns out, and again, F and B is no torque because it passes through the axis we're choosing here. And F and A works out to a number, right? Four newtons. We couldn't solve for F and A or F and B from the force equation, but from the torque equation, we can get it. So that forces four newtons. Now we can combine that with our force equation to find that F and B is eight newtons, or because the sum of them have to add to 12, remember, or we can do another torque equation. So let's just do that just to get more experience. So we'll pick uh, the point where scale A is as our axis. And again, clockwise is positive. In this case, mg is a clockwise torque. So we get plus 2d mg minus 3d fnb. That's a counterclockwise torque. The d's cancel out. And fna doesn't show up in that torque equation because it passes through the axis. OK, so this time you saw for fnb, you get 2 mg over 3. That's 24 newtons over 3. That is 8 newtons. OK, so remember that if all we knew about was force, we could not solve the problem. You have to bring in torque to solve this equilibrium problem to figure out what the force is from each one of those scales. So that's pretty interesting. So that's why we're using torque now, so we can solve problems like this. OK, and that is it for our look at that particular example of static equilibrium. The end.